No, it's been a really long time. I'm here with Tim Korkleski from Cool Mini or Not. What's up, guys? And um, I want to talk a little bit about the revitalization of the channel, what else is going on. But first, in, in this video, I might actually change shirts multiple times. I don't know, even as I'm filming right now, um, because there's other people that I kind of want to get on this first video, but it might not happen. So we'll just find out. Anyways, you might be looking at this massive stack of stuff. Okay. Now, unfortunately, I was out of pocket because of work, real life, it happens. Uh, but I ended up going down to the Cool Mini or Not Expo, hang, hung out with Tim, and uh, amazing deal when it comes to what you're getting from their swag bag. So, Tim, you were telling me that, you know, reminding me that the, the, the price of admission, 30 bucks. Yeah, it was 30 bucks, maybe 35 at the door. Okay. Range. And and they basically gave you a bag that when I got back on the plane, I couldn't take it with me. It was that huge and it had all this stuff. And so the first thing we're going to do, I just want to kind of give a couple shout outs to Cool Mini or Not Expo. Um, we got some videos next week um, that are coming where you're going to see a demo run of Dark Age, uh, which again features Tim here. I actually, I actually got really excited. That, that was a lot of fun. We, we broke it up into 20-minute segments only because of file length and trying to get as good quality as we could get. Um, and um, so that was a lot of fun. Fantastic hanging out with the Infinity guys. Did the uh, Dire States event that was Secure the Perimeter. And um, huge shout-outs to, to Mark, the uh, tournament organizer. Thank you so much for setting all that up. Um, but I want to take a minute and let's go ahead and uh, this is going to be like when we're doing news or if we're doing, this is going to kind of be the setup that you're going to see all the stuff that's here um, and a little bit of, you know, uh, magic, shall we say. Um, and we're going to show that off right now. First thing we're going to talk about that came in the swag bag was a Dark Age mini called Thorwin. Yep, the Thornwin. So that's actually an alternate sculpt compared to the uh, normal Thornwinds that uh, – normally work for the Salt Flat Nomads, which is one of the outcast sub-factions. And um, just as a as a kind of a reminder, um, oh man, I, I, I need to figure a way to change that that uh, video around so that we're you're, you're seeing the name correctly. But uh, the um, this is one of the factions that we actually review in the demo. We do Forsaken and Brood. I know I'm kind of spoiling it a little bit, but uh, just so you guys can get excited. Um, we didn't get a chance to use this model, uh, but uh, Gen Con's coming up, so who knows, right? <laughs> there will probably be a lot of Salt Flat Nomad players there. The next thing that came in the box, let's do a quick uh, close-up on that. That's the Dogs of War, um, and this is allows you to play as a different faction within this particular board game. Is that correct? Yes. So the way Dogs of War works is essentially uh, like you've got Mother Apollonia there. Um, it's a Euro game, so each person that you play... Uh, kind of acts as their own captain during the wars, and then each captain has their own special ability. So she is an exclusive figure that has her own special ability. She does not come in the core box. And and so so is there, just out of curiosity, in case someone goes, you know, I really wish that I could have gotten this model, was there any way to get it other than going to the Cool Men or Not Expo? Uh, yeah, we will always have these things available at conventions, and uh, I'm actually going to be running some specials that work direct with me uh, through stores, since I do work sales for Cool Mini or not, um, that if they order some copies of Dogs of War, they can actually get some of the exclusive captains. All right, so you hear that live here. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be talking about is here. Uh, we ended up getting a couple miniatures from Rivet Wars. And um, I didn't get a chance to actually try this out at uh, the Cool Mini or Not Expo, but there was an amazing display, and I'll – I took a photo of it, so we're going to be introducing that some at some point in this video. Um, tell us a little bit about Rivet Wars. How long has it been around? What's what is the like? I mean, I mean, these are very cutesy looking war guys, right? So, so what's, who's the target audience? Yeah, sure. So the the best audience for those uh, for Rivet Wars is definitely people that like a little bit more of uh, I don't want to say cutesy chibi, but like an alternative steampunk kind of World War One feel. Um, the entire idea behind Rivet Wars is that it's all based off of, like, the rivets. Uh, if you remember the old helmets that looked like rivets uh, that they had in World War One, it, it's kind of based off of that in this stylistic 
um, it's not really chibi, but like a stylistic, cartoony approach to it. Uh, the game was actually created by Ted Terranova, and it actually plays very similar to a real-time strategy game. So if you're used to games like Advanced Wars and things like that, this will probably feel pretty at home to you. Now, I, like I said, I unfortunately didn't get a chance to play this. I While I was at the Cool Mini or Not Expo, I tested out uh, Wrath of Kings. I tested out Dark Age. I had a big Infinity tournament to attend. Um, but I got to say, I actually saw quite a few people, like, really getting into this. Yeah, so with Rivet Wars, it's definitely a two-player... Um, it can be story-driven or a far more competitive game. Uh, so the big event that you probably saw on Friday evening was my big uh, six versus six event. Uh, the great thing with Rivet Wars, it's actually got rules online for free that uh, instead of just playing it like a typical board game, you can actually take the miniatures off of the tiles that come in the box and run it as a full-on war game. And that's what we were doing on Friday night. So with, with these particular miniatures, they're just add-ons to the game? I mean... Yeah. So okay. those are basically mercenaries, if you want to call them that. They're independents. So there's two there's two current factions in Rivet Wars. There's the Allied and the Blight. Uh, and it's kind of the Germans, or, well, flipping that around, it'd be more of the uh, English and the Germans. Got to do a little editing. Okay, so uh, the next thing, and I did get a chance to try this through once, at least the new version, which was Zombicide Black Plague. Yes, that is our new fantasy version of Zombicide that will be coming out quarter one next year. So the the models that come here, they're not necessarily exclusive to Black Plague, right? They are not. Those are actually for the standard Zombicides that are out right now. So you've got Season 1, uh, Prison Outbreak, Rue Morgue. And uh, those two in particular are actually uh, crossover models from Wrath of Kings. So the one you see on the left there, Union Worker number 42, a.k.a. Charles, is uh, based off of one of the Technus linemen that you'll see in Wrath of Kings. And then uh, the other one that's uh, Ilana Heska a.k.a. Alina. She's, uh, they're basically both cosplayers that are cosplaying characters from Wrath of Kings, and we brought them into Dark Age. Or into, I'm sorry, into uh, Zombicide. Perfect. All right, so cut back to this. Uh, now we can actually read everything that's going on. That's fantastic. Now, when I played uh, Wrath of Kings, this was the faction. What is this faction? Do you know? So, uh, Ilana Heska is actually the leader of, well, the character leader for the uh, Ashman Swordsman out of the Nasir faction. The Nasir. Yeah. And, and, I, and I do apologize. Uh, there, it was so loud when we did the demo for Wrath of Kings that, unfortunately, we didn't. I'm not going to post that video, um, and maybe we'll see if we can get a, another demo sometime during Gen Con. Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's talk about the next thing that's going on, and uh, that would be this massive box, which... I don't think you, I don't think this originally was in the um, the the swag bag originally, right? There was something else. You guys ended up putting this whole starter box. No, those were in the swag bags. Okay, my bad. Okay, so anyways, Wrath of Kings, effectively um, an entire uh, starter box. Yep, that is a Shield Han starter box. Uh, they're kind of our uh, Wuxia Kung Fu Asian themed faction in Wrath of Kings. They do a lot of cool stuff in their little bubbles of awesome. Um, that box right there, just to give everybody a heads up, that retails for $70. So that was right in the bag. And so, again, it, I mean, we haven't even gotten to the, the last thing, which is kind of like a it doesn't even matter if you're into Cool Man or not. It was added to the swag bag and it can be used everywhere. And, and do, do you mind if we jump to that now? No, go for it. All right. So I'm not even going to change cameras. Uh, they also included an entire terrain set for Sedition War. It's, this box is so big, I can't even really, well, okay, barely fit it in the camera angle. And uh, check out all the terrain that comes with it. Quite a bit. I mean, we're talking about objective mar markers for any game. Yeah. We got crates, uh, yeah, there's barricades, so you got more than enough for any type of a sci-fi setup that you'll ever do. And a lot of those doors and barricades, um, I've had a lot of people ask me, well, how do I use so many of them? Because there are quite a bit in the box. And uh, if you're not playing something like Space Hulk or Sedition Wars and you're just using this for other things, um, when you're making foam core terrain or whatever else you're making, those slap on there really easily just to make doors. Yeah, I, so like I said, all in all, we're talking, you know, 30, 35 bucks in order to attend Cool Mini or Not. And you, a lot of the events at Cool Mini or Not were free. 
And then swag bag, hundred and something, hundred and fifty bucks plus. Yeah, about that roughly. I mean, between uh, the terrain set and the Sedition War, or sorry, the Sedition Wars terrain set and the Shale Han starter box that you have there, that's hundred and ten bucks. And that and that that doesn't even cover what I ended up picking up from the Infinity Tournament as well, which that's yeah. still coming. So, uh, so I'm pretty pretty excited. Anyways, fantastic showing at Cool Mini or Not. We're going to be doing kind of a Cool Mini or Not week next week. I know this is a very much an Infinity channel, and, and we're going back to Infinity, trust me. Um, I, so here's some changes. We got this room. It's all set up now. You saw that we got some camera magic going on. A um, couple of things that we're going to be going over pretty soon. Next week is going to be primarily Cool Mini or Not, but I'm hoping this – at some time next week, actually do an RTD. Um, the RTD will actually focus on some of the things that are coming for Gen Con, uh, but really a focus on some GW stuff, which we haven't talked about on this channel for a long time, and um, and also the infinity goodness that's coming to Gen Con. Uh, the week, f and and so and between the RTD and the cool mini or not videos, then next week we're going to be focusing in on a little bit more of the infinity stuff. And I'm going to try to get some videos made uh, with Nestor. I don't know how many people out there know, but Nestor's from the Wargaming Consortium. He runs the uh, Infinity uh, Facebook page. And uh, he and I are kind of like ramping up to a game that we're going to finally face off with at Gen Con. This is a long time coming. Last year at Gen Con, we actually set up the challenge. Uh, we were supposed to actually play off at the Cool Mini or Not Expo. Um, so... You know, but unfortunately for Nestor, I mean, really, really sad thing that happened. Um, his models got kind of busted up in his flight to the convention, so we didn't get a chance to play. I think he only had two that survived, if I remember correctly, after talking with him. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm certain that it wasn't many. Um, so uh, we're going to be kind of ramping up a little bit of like what we're kind of preparing for, um, and 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 this is a big thing for us guys. Um, the, a lot of the war core people, at least the most of them that I've met, pretty laid back. So, I mean, while we're going to have fun and be as competitive as we can be, we're very much on the whatever kind of page <laughs> of, uh, you know, gaming whatnot. Um, the, the goal, of course, is going to be to inform you guys a little bit about more about Infinity. For those of you guys who already know, then maybe you'll just be entertained a little bit. We'll do some entertaining as well. Um, dance monkey. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> uh, we're, we're also going to be, uh, focusing in on some rules maybe and, and getting some of that all posted. Um, I don't want to, I don't want to completely destroy this. I have no idea how long we've been running. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and conclude the video here. Uh, that way, like I said, we'll have it all ready to go for you Friday. Hopefully if, unless I goofed and uh, we went live the second I hit uh, broadcast. Yeah. I see this little live button up at the top. So Fantastic. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, okay. I don't see anyone chatting or anything, but, you know, whatever. Uh, have a good one. We'll be back with more stuff on the Dermacom channel. Uh, Tim, thank you so much again for coming out. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I really appreciate it. Uh, uh, we're going to kick this video off and, like I said, post it on Friday. Oh, some other things, because um, I don't think I'm going to be able to actually get all these people in time for tomorrow. Um I've also got some collaborations going, and if you are a YouTube channel uh, that has an interest in doing some collaboration work with me, get in touch with me. Let me know what you had in mind. Um, as a as a forefront, I'm actually going to be working with uh, Alan, uh, who did a lot of the Beasts of War Gen Con videos. He unfortunately can't make Gen Con this year, um, but I've sent him a lot of Underground Lasers terrain. He's going to start assembling that and painting it up for me. Uh, in preparation for some bat reps that we're going to have coming up on this channel. Um, and again, so if you are a YouTube channel and you have something that you're like, hey, this would be fun if we did this kind of together, get in touch with me. We'll find out. I love collaborating with people, especially if it's just like, hey, what's up? I'm in your video. <laughs> uh, big fan of that. And uh, for everyone who's coming out to Gen Con, don't hesitate to come find me. Uh, I will be at the Cohort's Belly booth. Um, and I apologize, I didn't grab the number yet, but it'll be in the description below if you're looking for it. I'll, I'll put some kind of a link to a uh, Facebook post or whatnot uh, that will show you the map. And uh, uh, Tim, where do you know what uh, booth number Cool Mini or Not is going to be at? 
Yeah, so we actually got a split booth this year. I don't know quite how that happened, but uh, we're in booth 1317 and right across the walkway in 1417 as well. Okay, so so unfortunately, I think we're on completely different ends of the spectrum, or you're kind of centrally located, and I think we're at one end. Yeah, we're um, a little closer to the doors. I'm sorry, say, say that one more time? A little closer to the three main doors as you enter. Okay, so there you go. If you want to find Cool Mini or not, that's where you can find them. And um, like I said, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to it. John Sigsby is going to be out of the Gen Con, so hopefully we're going to be able to get some games in with him. And uh, yeah, we're going to have a good time. And and also, uh, we'll be posting as much as we can live from Gen Con. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Have a good one.